everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new to my channel, uh, most of my content is normally uh, crafts, music, travel, stuff like that. Home renovation. Home renovation That's things. <laughs> you know, over the last nine months, I've been a little preoccupied. I am hoping to return to my regularly scheduled programming soon. That is the hope. We shall see. But with that said, Let's jump into our birth story. As of June 12th, a week ago today, we have added a new member to our family. But wait, how did we get here, one might ask. Let's rewind. It all started with a vision. A vision to have a natural, out of hospital, water birth, working with a midwife, with little to no intervention and a very calm and peaceful environment. So let's jump into the timeline of events and see if that vision came true. At this point, I am 41 weeks. So well past my 40 week mark, my due date of June 5th. Friday morning at 5.45, I wake up with a sudden jolt down below and uh, then I hear a very loud pop. Like, really loud, I thought I broke something. Well, technically something did break. <laughs> if you wanna get technical about it. A lot of broke. <laughs> I get up, proceed to the restroom, and yes, my waters have broken. We say waters pl in plural form because apparently there's not just a singular water. There's multiple of them. Anyways, but then labor starts progressing, or contractions start progressing. And uh, so Friday, all day, I am pretty much in early labor until a certain point where contractions aren't progressing, things aren't really moving, forward like they should be, especially since my water has broken. When your water breaks, you are on a time clock, kind of. There's a certain amount of time you have until things need to get going because... Because the amniotic sac that holds the fluid and everything acts as a barrier between the baby and the outside world, including germs, bacteria, and those sorts of things. So once, that's, once that barrier is gone, as time goes on, the greater chance you have of infection and other nasty things happen to you. Yes. Also mentioned in my third trimester vlog, if you're interested in watching that, links somewhere, you should know that he, this one, the baby, the child, was posterior. Pretty much probably throughout my whole pregnancy especially towards the end my goal was to get him to turn using spinning babies the optimal position is anterior where his face is facing my spine his spine is facing out and so he was basically yes. the opposite his spine was yes closer to your spine. here's some graphics for explanation reasons around 7 p.m Contractions begin getting a little bit closer together, closer to like 10 minutes apart, 12 minutes apart, something like that. We go to the midwife's house for a little checkup so she could uh, see what position he was in, the heart rate, all the things. Midwife suggested we do castor oil. So we're like, okay, great. That's why I kind of wanted to do, you know, like a week ago, trying to get things going earlier than 41 weeks, but I digress. So we proceed to get some castor oil while we're out. We also stopped by the lovely Chick-fil-A. I get myself a lovely sandwich. We could not find castor oil anywhere. So there's that. We get home, we eat our sandwiches, and then we go to bed, pretty much, because I was tired. So you might be wondering why I mentioned getting a sandwich. So just keep that in mind. At eight o'clock, I eat my sandwich, go to bed. Around nine o'clock, things start picking up. Contractions get much closer together. Um, they start getting more intense. Too. More intense, a little bit like more painful. And one reason why it, it was fine for me is 
because of uh, this girl, Bridget Tyler, Taylor, whatever her last name is, um, a doula who gives advice on things, one of her videos was about breathing techniques to get you through all the different stages of labor. If I had not watched that video, I would not have made it through any part <laughs> of this whole story I'm telling you now. She was the boss of breathing. Who, me? Yes. Yes. I, I took to heart all of what I absorbed in, from that video of hers. So if you're in this, in this situation, I highly recommend you check her channel out. Great stuff. At 12 a.m. It's now Saturday morning, Friday night, 12 a.m. Time works, yeah. Some people get confused <laughs> by, by all that. <laughs> Contractions are now four or five minutes apart, as they should be, when you head to a hospital or Lasting places. Lasting for at least a minute long. Lasting, yeah. All the things check marked. So we proceed to our midwife's house. The car has already been packed because we knew things were going somewhere soon. And when I say packed, I mean packed. We have my bag, we have baby's bag, we have an extra bag full of, you know, all, the, all the missing <laughs> things that I wanted for my birth, like candles and fan. a fan thing, a heat pad, a sound machine or a, like a Bluetooth speaker. speaker thing so I can have like sound music, what, what have you, all the things. Was, I had a plan, right? I had a vision. I already told you. And a food bag, a bag full of food, snacks and things. Because when you are in a out of hospital birth situation, you are allowed to eat throughout. You can eat whatever you want, whenever you want. Whereas when you're in a hospital, more than likely you're going to be limited with what food you can intake in case of things. We head to the midwife's house. And the very first thing she does when we get there is check and see the baby's position. In so doing, she's kind of using, she's using her ultrasound machine, pushing on my stomach. With every little, little touch, little push, another contraction would happen. Very painful. But on top of that, I threw up my little sandwich that I had at eight o'clock Friday night. That's how painful it was. Sorry if that was gross for you to hear. Anyways, we continue the labor. It's very intense. And, you know. But once again, continue the same thing. You're doing your breathing. You're doing different positions. Um, we Baby is still posterior. Very intense pain on my behalf. Um, but labor on his end was not progressing. It was on my end, however. It got to a point where... I was no longer in control of my body. There was involuntary pushing I had no control over. And I made the decision that I wanted to go to the hospital because first of all, I wanted a water birth. And that was very important because water helps with, you know, gravity and it calms you down, relaxes you, relaxes your muscles, all the things, you know. I wanted that experience. But because my water broke first thing before anything started happening, I was unable to do that because of the bacteria getting in where it doesn't need to be at that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, because for the record, at this point, you labored for about three hours or so at the midwife's yes. house. And I had been already laboring at home the whole day Friday. So we're quickly reaching the 24 hour mark after my water had broken. It's been 24 hours since I've slept and I also have no food in my stomach. So we arrive at the hospital, we get checked into the exam room, find out that I am eight centimeters dilated and the hospital confirmed that I was, or that he was posterior and not in the right position at all. Um, and then they also took some blood tests and all the things that they needed to do to get me checked in as they would. Um, so about an hour later, at 5 a.m., they wheel us into the labor and delivery room. They drug me up with epidural, which is amazing, um, for like 
pain purposes. Obviously, I had not wanted to do that because I wanted as natural as possible with as little drugs as possible. But basically what but, we said is if we end up having to go to the hospital, then like kind of all bets are off at that point. Yes. Like we do what we have to do to make sure little guy comes out and it plus with, as long as you'd already been laboring and everything. Like, yeah. I was, on, some I was on 24 <laughs> hours, no sleep. No, if, if it had been earlier on in my labor, then I would have more than likely try, tried to go through the laboring part in the hospital without the epidural, maybe, 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 I don't know. So after the epidural kicks in, I am pain free and I'm able to rest a little bit. But when I say a little bit, I mean maybe 20 minutes at the most because I'm in a new place, there's monitors everywhere, things are happening and I'm wondering like what's going on, like I'm ready to get, I'm ready to go, <laughs> I'm ready to get things going and like, whatever, I had no idea what was going on really. And plus um, you're more concerned about trying to get some food since you hadn't eaten anything. But yes. They were I was, restricting. I was starving. Any food, but they restricted any food and water, because and water, which I apparently isn't that common. I guess you're still allowed to drink water, but not in my situation. Um, because in the event that you, I would be rushed into surgery, they didn't want food in my system and things stuff like that. Nine thirty Saturday morning, doctor, nurse, someone comes in and we do some practice pushing um, just to see kind of how I could handle it maybe or what my limitations were as far as just making sure that you were pushing in the right place or like teaching me how to because it's very difficult to push when you have absolutely no feeling whatsoever anywhere down below Yes, and then maybe around 10 o'clock, we start pushing for real. So again, like, yeah, you're pushing, but they're doing multiple positions, trying to get things to progress. Um, we can see on the monitor that, you know, contractions are happening very regularly and mm -hmm. on a schedule, like they hadn't backed off at all. And mm -hmm. Sup, I'm drugged up, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting anticipation. So yeah, uh, apparently on my end, I was doing everything that I needed to. I was pushing the way I needed to um, and everything. He had other plans, however. He still wasn't. He still was posterior, not progressing at all, not moving. Nothing was, nothing was happening on his end. This, on this one's end. Several doctors tried to turn him manually and uh, that wasn't happening either. So around 12 p.m. Saturday afternoon, we stopped the pushing, and at that point, a horde of doctors come in the room. And She's not kidding. Like, we had at least 10 doctors, nurses, whoever it was, all come into the room at once, like it was some sort of intervention or something. To deliver um, unfortunate news. They, they said, yeah, very, very <laughs> personal news and you know, at that time, we're at, what, 30 plus hours without sleep, and... Still like, no food. Like, y'all ate. Y'all had a muffin and some coffee. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> they said uh, <laughs> we were positive for HIV. What? <laughs> Come again? Excuse me? Um, like, you must be wrong. <laughs> yes. And they were like, so they were asking us all those questions. Do you do drugs? Do you do trans do you have blood transfusions? And we were like, no, no. I was even like, I actually give blood. So yeah. if I had HIV, like, they wouldn't take my blood. And they would tell me, hey, buddy, you got HIV. And that hasn't happened. So, so at that point. The doctors, we, we, we spend like 30 minutes talking over our options and 
whatever reason this blood test result came back this way as positive, um, basically resulted in them administering a drug to me that would lessen the transmission of it, should it be real, to my child. And then the talks of C-section started popping up. So basically, until they had further proof that it was a false positive on the first test, mm -hmm. basically they gave us no other option other than we have to treat it as if it is true, mm -hmm. therefore administering the medicine and... I mean, they, they at least gave us an option about the C-section, but you could tell it was highly encouraged. But see, so aside from the HIV part of it, Baby, because he wasn't progressing, and his head was swelling, basically, yeah, so in, in, a, in a certain ins part. Instead of his head naturally just entering into the canal and moving along it, it was actually swelling into the canal, where like basically his cranium was staying in place, but then everything else was yeah. shifting into it. HIV stuff aside, a C-section was more than likely going to happen regardless. But the HIV thing was kind of the... It at least got point. the doctors on board with the idea of a C-section because yes. it was clear before then they were highly encouraging a natural birth. They were running my blood test again, um, or they were sending it to a different place to get tested by a third party or something, what have you. Um, so that was sent off and we didn't know when to expect results, but they said until those results come back, could not breastfeed. Baby had to have drugs administered to him daily. So I'm taken to the OR, prepared for the C-section. And at 1.42, he was born. Side note. Screaming. Yes, he came out <laughs> screaming. Everything was fine. He was very healthy. He passed all of his tests that have ever been taken from him. Um, so yeah, very extremely healthy baby. I would imagine that he would be at 41 weeks. He's spent a little bit extra time in the oven. Heavy baby. Yes. <laughs> at almost nine pounds. <laughs> Eight pounds, 15 ounces. Um, which is another probably reason why he was stuck or whatever. He was larger than, he was, of, on, the larger he was side. on the, of the larger side. Yes. Side note, I had not done a whole lot of research on C-sections because that was the very last thing on my plan. We recognized that as a possibility, but I guess didn't take it that seriously. Yes. That it would ever get that far. Um, I had no idea. And I don't know if this is the same for everybody, but for me, yes, they, Get, they drug you up with epidural, like an actual, like a, like a real epidural, where you feel absolutely nothing and, or supposedly you would feel absolutely nothing except a little pressure is what they said. It was not just a little pressure. When they were, you know, fixing me back up after he was born, it was the most intense pressure I've ever felt worse than the contractions I had had earlier. And I think the reason why it was like that, the whole uh, fixing me back up was lasted like 30 to 40 minutes. But during that whole time, it was constant pressure, pain. Like it wasn't they were stuffing all of my organs back in and it was very, very painful. And I also felt a burning sensation but so the whole point of the epidural was to not feel any sharp, like cutting or what have you. But the pressure I felt, the little burning I felt, my whole body was shaking. I mean, it was so bad. You were literally having to still do all the I breathing I still had techniques. to do the labor <laughs> stuff, breathing and just, but there was no, but there was no end. Like contractions, they come. They come they in go, waves. And they come and they go. But this was constant. That's why I think this was worse for me. For me, I don't know if that's the same for everybody who had a C-section, but um, never again. Close to 50 hours, no sleep, no food in me. Like I was still, I still had not eaten. I had no water. They hooked me up to an IV, but like my mouth was dry. I was thirsty. <sighs> so now, in our timeline, we are on the road to recovery. With it being a week 
ago today. We've since learned that we don't have HIV. Yes. <laughs> It's, it took us, it took them a few days to, to get those test results back as we knew they would be. It well, was a false positive. But it's also time that you lost because, I mean, your plan was to breastfeed from the very beginning and... And we couldn't do that, so we had to supplement with formula, which is something I didn't want to do. But what else are you going to do? Like, he needs to eat, so... So now you have some challenges ahead of you when it comes to breastfeeding. If I'm even able to. But see, the problem now is, on my road to recovery, I can only hold him for a certain amount of time before things start hurting um, in this current week. I don't know how much longer that's going to last, or if it's going to last for a longer period of time, what have you. Um, but because he underwent surgery... Yeah, I, he can't, I can't, there's no way for me to breastfeed <laughs> in, a, in a comfortably or... Because you can't really hold him like I'm holding him. Currently. I can't. I, I can do it for a little while, but not long enough to get him his nutri nutrients, whatever. And Just so. a day ago, I was able to finally lay down in the bed. Up until that point, I had been sleeping in a recliner for a whole week because laying down hurt, laying on my side hurt, um, walking was difficult, pretty much the same kind of pain sort of that I've had for a month now. So it wasn't really anything new. It was just <laughs> annoying. It was just unplanned for it to continue after birth. Yes. Because again, the whole point of trying to do... I mean, I, I knew I was going to be in pain after birth, but like... But the whole point the, of delivering it, naturally is, it, since it happens naturally... Mm -hmm. The, the recovery the recovery period nat for natural birth is much quicker than a cesarean. You know, wanting a birth that was going to have the least amount of intervention and things like that in it, we ended up getting one that had the most intervention in it. And so we're just having to, you know, adjust accordingly. And while, you know, I was going to be involved from the start, I had to kind of take a lot of the reins, especially in the very beginning. I mean, it was pretty much, since you were in the hospital bed, I was having to change them and feed them and all that and everything so you could focus on your recovery. And and it's really only now that we can actually start getting into some sort of new normal and routine. So it's been a challenge, but we're making it. Anyways, so that wraps up today's video. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, <laughs> Like and subscribe. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Ain't he so cute? So cute. Is he, is he, he's almost doing he's sleeping. Yes, he's sleeping. Cute baby. <laughs>